Hello, good morning, everybody, or good evening. How is everybody doing? So I'll wait for some people to show up and we'll uh, get started here. I'll cover a little bit of news as well. So, uh, hey, Earl, how are you doing? Uh, I would live in any country that spoke English. There we go. Well, uh, Malaysia speaks English, Philippines, Singapore too, but Singapore is really expensive. So therefore, Singapore is really more of a place that I would just go and visit. The only way I would live in Singapore is if I was working in Singapore. And, uh, and then, of course, you know, your income would probably be pretty decent, too. But, yeah, Singapore is not a place that I'd like to live. So we'll wait for some people to show up. Uh, there we go. We got some people popping in. How are you doing, David? Good morning. And Stephen, thanks for being a YouTube member, by the way. And uh, hey, Brian, uh, some good news. I've got some good news uh, from Cebu City. I think that's what that reads. And hey, TJ, how are you doing? And Mike, how's it going, everybody? So I guess the, the first the first round of news, I just read this. Um, quarantine for 300,000 returning Filipinos. So apparently hundreds of thousands of jobless overseas foreign workers expected to fly home from June to August. Um, there's hundreds of thousands of uh, people uh, Filipinos not working jobless now in like Dubai and places like that. And they're all having to come home. So that's, uh, and it says Dubai up to 300,000 jobless expatriate Filipino workers are expected to fly home between now and the next three months. Philippine government officials said on Wednesday, that's, that's a, um, major mess and, uh, certainly going to hurt the, uh, economy for sure. So anyway, uh, how you doing, Ben? Good morning. And uh, riding in tan tandem. How you doing? And hello. How are you doing? And we got, uh, oh, okay. You're from L.A. It looks like you're a police officer. So uh, are you a police officer? And morning, Gurkha. Oh, ha half of the message didn't load. Okay, good morning. So, and uh, hey, John, how are you doing? Hey, good morning, John from Cleveland. Good to see you live. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it looks like I, I see a bunch of new faces that uh, I haven't normally had in my live stream. So awesome to see everybody here today. And uh, Albert, how are you doing? And uh, Mark's over in Michigan. And we got John in uh, Vegas. Very cool. So, uh, hey, Daniel, how you doing? Um, is it an open mic? I mean, it's an open forum. You can ask or anything you would like. Yeah, it's no problem whatsoever. Um, yep. So, rough times over in Dallas. And we got Danny Williams. Yeah, I haven't done a lot of live streams. I've just I've been doing two or three a week. So uh, yesterday, me and my girlfriend were on our way to the store. We we're driving and we got stopped at the checkpoint and they said no more back riders, meaning two people on a motorbike are no longer allowed. So we can't go out together anymore. Just one person uh, at a time, apparently. So... Hey, Derek. Hello from Canada in Dowan, part-time. Very cool. Where are you now, Derek? Are you, are you in Dowan or are you in uh, Canada? Hey, Barry. How's it going? And Robert, how are you doing there? Over. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. So, yeah, um, I felt inspired to do a video on Malaysia, and uh, I'm going to do some others on other places as well. So, um, places that I've been to, Thailand, Vietnam, yeah. So, something uh, I'll be exploring a little bit more in the future here. So, hey, Scott, 
Love to learn about some good towns to live in and around Southeast Asia. Well, as soon as I can get uh, traveling again, you, you will have that. <laughs> and we got greetings from Virginia. How are you doing today? Okay, so you're in uh, Canada. Um, lucky you, honestly, because Canada, you would much rather be in Canada right now than Dowin. Uh, Dowin is uh, pretty, well, it's pretty restrictive here in the whole Dumaguete area. Yeah. Okay, you, you, know, you own land near the Dowin Market. Okay, yep, I'm familiar with that. Let's see here. Hey, Geo, New York City bracing for more protests this week. Yeah, it's a, it's a mess right now in the U.S., I tell you. Uh, Philippe, how's it going? <laughs> North Pole, Alaska, how are you doing, Stephen? Uh, what kind of work? Well, I'll, I'll be doing uh, teaching, um, but I'm doing specialized teaching. I'm not just teaching like basic English, like ABC. I'm teaching more advanced English. Um, I'm teaching something called the IELTS, which basically helps prepare students who want to live over in an English speaking country. Uh, maybe they want to work there or they want to uh, go to a university in an English speaking country. And I, they have to take an IELTS test and they have to reach a certain score before they are allowed uh, to come over there. And so my job is to actually help them prepare for that test and get them to the correct level that they need to be at. So that's, that's what I'll be doing. Yeah, Steve, I've read that. Uh, Cambodia will demand 3,000 deposit for various COVID-related expenses and even plan to set up bank branches at airport if negative deposit supposedly returns. Sounds like potential scam to me. Uh, you and me both, Steve, I read the same thing, and I was thinking to myself, they could just come out and say you, you have COVID-19. And uh, you need to be quarantined for 14 days. And what a what a what a racket that is. I mean, I wouldn't trust that at all. No way would I ever go to Cambodia and put three thousand uh, dollar a three thousand dollar deposit down. That's just insane. So, oops, let's see here. Yeah, things change daily. This nonsense needs to stop. I'm going to try going to immigration next next week. That'll be an adventure. I'm actually going to pay a guy who will go to immigration for me and and do the waiting and everything. I, I think it costs like a thousand pesos. Uh, seems worth it to me, so I don't have to wait in line or, uh, you know, have to worry about all that nonsense. Yeah, no, nobody would do that. I, I think the only, but I mean, if if you're filthy rich, you know, maybe it'd be no big deal for you. Um, and you actually live there or something, or you want to live there, maybe then. But the majority of people, no, nobody's going to do that. Uh, with Vietnam visa renewal requirements, have you of having to make a visa run every thirty days? What are your thoughts? Uh, Michael, there are 90 day visas available and also a one year too, depending on your citizenship. Um, there are some other options. So, um, but doing every 30 days, that would just be a pain in the ass, uh, doing a border run into Cambodia or something that would be a major pain. So, um, I'm a bit different. I, I, you know, I, I'm usually working when I go to, into a country, so you know, I wouldn't have to go through all that. But yeah, 30 days, every 30 days, that would be just a, a major pain doing that Cambodia run. So, hey, buddy, how are you doing today? And I remember back in 98, University of Arizona needed over 50 math associate professors because the English language test needed a higher score and all the non-English speakers failed, very few passed. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> so, yeah, again, if you guys didn't hear, uh, between June and August, uh, 
300,000 um, jobless overseas foreign workers are expected to be returning back to the Philippines. And of course, they're all going to have to be quarantined and tested. Um, here in Dumaguete, we had zero cases. And then they started letting in, um, letting people come back in into uh, Dumaguete and Negros. And uh, now we have 19 cases. And uh, my fear is that they might actually start to lock things down again. That was kind of indicated to me by the stopping us yesterday and saying no more back riders, no more people, no more two people on a motorbike anymore. And uh, they were really strict on going into the grocery store yesterday. So I don't know this, this place. <laughs> So, yeah, the visa runs all depend on if you need to be quarantined in both countries. Wouldn't be worth it. Yeah, well, for sure. I don't want to go anywhere until um, this nonsense is over. It just, just doesn't make any sense. How are you doing, Miss V Diary? <laughs> Bill, English is a second language here in the U.S. Yeah, no, no kidding. You know, when I lived in Florida, it really was. I think Spanish spoke more than English. So. Hey, Lance, how are you doing? And Reginald, how is the economy going to sustain all the people returning? It's not, is the short answer. Um, this place is going to be a mess. But... Uh, the Philippines hasn't seen the fallout, you know, like the U S has seen the fallout, like the job market going down, the stock markets went down for a while and now things are, uh, you know, things are starting to go back to normal, except for all the uh, protests and riots, of course. But uh, here, I don't think you've seen the fallout yet. It hasn't even happened yet. Um, it's going to get much worse before it gets better for sure. Uh, no need to do a visa run every 30 days in Vietnam. Just go to immigration, pay 10 bucks for the stamp or get a travel agent to do it for you. Okay, that's good news. But you can also do the business visa too. Hey, Daryl, how you doing? Um, Malaysia is calling me. It's, it's yelling. It's screaming out my name. <laughs> uh, when exactly am I going to Malaysia? I don't have the exact time. Um, it'll be as soon as things open up in Malaysia and as soon as they get my paperwork all taken care of for my visa. So I, I, I couldn't tell you. Nick, based on what I'm seeing, that's what I'm thinking. I don't think tourism is going to open up this year. I think they will do a push for domestic tourism, but I don't see international tourism opening up this year in the Philippines, possibly like Vietnam or Malaysia or Thailand. I think you'll probably see some tourism open up, but I don't see the Philippines getting their act together. It's just too much of a mess right now. They've got so many overseas foreign workers pouring back in. It's just a big mess. So, Ernest Grunner, if the U.S. were right back where we started due to all that yeah, due to all the protests, yeah. Have you thought of a plan B if you're going to Malaysia to work, but Ging is offloaded? Well, uh, the plan is for Ging and I to do a couple of small trips together before we make the move. So, in other words, we'll go for five days, come back, um, go to Vietnam for five days, come back. And we'll do all of that to get the stamps in her passport to make it look like, oh, okay, she's a seasoned traveler. She's flown out of the country a few times and come back. So that's the plan. Um, if that doesn't work, I'm going to hire a visa agent here uh, to work on getting her an education visa so she can go over there. Either way, I, I will get her over. I'll, I'll get her over there. So for sure. Because that's an option, too. You can hire a, a visa there, there's uh, these agents that, uh, and there's some very reputable ones too. You know, there's some scam artists too, but I, I know of some reputable ones that other Filipinas have worked with. Um, 
because when I worked when I worked in Vietnam, I knew some Filipino teachers, and they um, all used the same agent, and so I would use their agent that they recommended. And uh, you know, you pay the fee, and they they help you get all your documents and everything together and, and get the visa. So, yeah, I, that's the plan that I would do. So I've heard a lot about most of the countries in Southeast Asia in regard to expats except Burma or Laos. Is it more dangerous like Indonesia? No, Burma or Laos, really. Uh, I've got a buddy who went to Laos, and uh, he he said it was very nice people, very friendly, but the English was horrible, and the infrastructure was, in, was even worse than the Philippines. So, um, yeah, I, you know... I, it's it's a place you could certainly visit, but I don't think many people would want to live there, to be honest. Uh, my job is 24 hours a week. So my job would be, uh, let me see, I'd have Sundays and Mondays off. And Tuesday through Saturday, I would work. And basically, it would just be like morning hours. Um, yeah, about like morning hours. So, hey, Mavic, have a good morning. Hope uh, you've been well. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I, I just do live streams kind of uh, periodically now. <laughs> uh, Miss V Diary, Philippines is being crazy now. It's frustrating. Yeah, for sure. Captain Gabe, man. I used to love that cartoon, by the way. <laughs> uh, late coming in, however, is there any Black Life rallies going on over your way, mate? No. No. I heard they're, I heard they're happening even in Australia. It's insane that it's starting to happen all over the place. So, Lance, uh, hoping for the best there. I, I still need to get there by October to Davao. Uh, but yeah, I've been seeing how better to live in Malaysia. Yeah. I mean, honestly, uh, to me, if you go to another one of these countries in Southeast Asia, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, Malaysia, I think most people will see that you can live a much better life. Um, you really can. And, um, a lot of people also don't realize that I really don't find the Philippines to be that cheap to be honest. Um, I find it kind of expensive in certain ways. Uh, Steven, can the airlines continue like this for another six months? It'll be almost a year of reduced air travel. I don't know how. They're going to have to be backed up uh, by the government. The government's going to have to dump a bunch of money into the airlines or it's going to go belly up. So, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. So... Hey, uh, thank you. I really appreciate this super chat. Uh, your channel has really grown in quality and content. The best of fortune in your travels. I appreciate that. Um, I know my editing is starting to get better. I've been uh, working on editing and um, I've also, you know, if I do like a talking video, I'm no longer just going to sit there and show my face the entire time. Like when I talked about Malaysia, I was like, let me throw some video in there. I don't think people want to stare at my face the entire time listening to me talk about Malaysia. I think they would rather see it. And so that's what I've been doing. And uh, I'm, I'm going to continue to do that. I, when I do a talking video, I'm not just going to show my face the entire video. It's just going to be um, other things that you can see. So let's see here. Yeah, uh, Darren, once you go to Malaysia, you'll have to do a video on the sights and sounds. Absolutely, for sure. Um, I'll be doing lots of videos. Uh, I think you have talked, had me talked into Malaysia instead of Thailand or the Philippines. Been checking out the accommodations today. Very, very nice with great prices. Also, plenty of things to see and do. Yeah, um, Camp, the only downside to Malaysia is some people won't like the Muslim aspect of it. And uh, so I, I won't, uh, you know, sugarcoat it for you. There there are 
you know, a lot of Muslims there. However, they seem to be all very friendly. Um, they're used to living with different races. They live with the Indian and Chinese. Um, I, I've got several people on my channel have told me they've dated Muslim women and, uh, and had no problems with it too. So, um, interesting me, myself, I, I probably would never do that. Um, I would stick to a Chinese Mal Malaysian, or I would stick to one of the thousands of overseas foreign worker, uh, Filipinas that are there. Um, there is a huge population of Filipinas in Kuala Lumpur working at, in restaurants and hotels, um, nannies and housekeepers. And, um, they have a Filipino section in Kuala Lumpur where they have like some restaurants and a little grocery store and easy enough to meet a Filipina there too. And she's going to be established. She'll be working. She'll be kind of independent, you know, so might not be a bad thing. So Steve, the IATF announced yesterday that restaurants, cafes can allow dine-in from June 15th at 30% capacity about time i have to research that steve was that all over the philippines or just in certain areas so geo i sure hope you're wrong because i have to enter the philippines by october no matter what i've been keeping track i think by the end of july will be better i understand i hope so too lance i i uh i hope i'm totally wrong um I, I hope I am. Oh, I'm sorry. You, it's not Lance. It's you like Craig. But yeah, I I hope I'm wrong too because I know a lot of people want to get here and I want to I want to get out. <laughs> so, uh, Carl, everyone here in San Francisco and in the U.S. I think are fooling themselves. A lot of people not wearing masks or social distancing. This will not go away anytime soon. Well, the riots and protests certainly don't help. <laughs> uh, upon arrival in Malaysia, it'd be nice if you could do a video about the dating scene for expats in Malaysia, a traditional Muslim country. Yeah. Um, well, I've got buddies who've dated Filipina girls and they've dated, I know some guys that have dated some Muslim girls, but most guys end up with like a Chinese Malay girl. And uh, they are not like regular Chinese girls. They, do, they don't even consider themselves Chinese. Um, Chinese nationality, but they're really, you know, they born and raised in Malaysia. Let me take a sip of coffee here. Uh, Miss V Diary, let me know about visa expert, Geo. I might need it. I haven't tried flying outside the country, so hoping when Philippines opens, then it's not hard for me to fly to either Bangkok or Vietnam. Yeah, if it's your very first time flying um out of country it, it can be a problem sometimes but yeah I'll, I'll let you know how are the people different in malaysia as compared to the philippines um they're not as uh well here's my opinion they, they are very friendly but they don't really show it on the outside like filipinos will give you these great big smiles and you can just say hey good morning and they're just very receptive and uh and happy go lucky you know um malaysians are um they may appear not so friendly but they actually really are um i've had no problems talking to them and uh you know i had a taxi driver who took me all around kuala lumpur i rented him for the entire day for like 30 bucks or something and uh he took me everywhere and the guy was just extremely friendly. And at lunchtime, he actually brought me back to his house. Um, and and I had uh, lunch with him and his wife and his kids. So it was, it was very cool. Um, very friendly people. But uh, I think outward appearances, initially people think, oh, they are they don't seem that friendly. Because they don't have the great big smiles like the Filipinos do. But I think they're just as every bit uh, friendly. Um, girls, you can't. If you have a Filipina girl, she can't wear her short shorts and her little half cut off shirt quite as much as you, you, you know, you can do that in the Philippines, but in Malaysia being a Muslim country, they have to be a little bit more careful on the way they dress. So other than that, I don't see 
you know, a lot of difference there. <clears throat> so I went to get my oil changed at the dealer today in South Florida. I was about the only non-Spanish speaker. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> hey, John, how you doing? And uh, morning, Daniel, how you doing? Uh, just to let you know that Malaysia Airlines will open a few neighboring flights. Uh, one direct flight to the UK in phases starting in July 1. So that's that's good news. Uh, Air Asia is advertising their all-you-can-fly domestically for 399 ringgit or $94 for a year. Wow, that's amazing. Good price. Hey, Stephen. Uh, enjoyed your Malaysian video. I agree. I like the footage with voiceover. Yeah, uh, so that's kind of what I'm going to do from now on. So, uh, uh, brilliant video. Yeah, thank you. Uh, dine in GCQ areas from June 15th. Well, we're GCQ, so hopefully that uh, happens. Yeah. Yeah, 24 hours a week. Here in Florida, I worked 57 and a half hours last week. Two days, I worked 8.30 to 10. Yikes. Um, you know, I when I was a claims adjuster working, I often worked like 50, 60 hour weeks because I was salary and it uh, really sucked. Yeah, now USA is getting worse. Uh, 20 million people now there are 20 million people are infected. I don't think 20 million people are infected. Um, that doesn't sound right. Here in the Philippines, it's already 24K infected. Hope Duterte won't put it back to enhanced community quarantine here in Manila. That's my worry. I, I really don't think they can afford to do that, to be honest. Malaysia is more conservative. Yes. Um, it is a bit more conservative. Yeah, for sure. So do you plan on learning the language of the locals in Malaysia? I might try to learn Malay. Um, I think it's always best if you can learn a little bit of uh, the local language. But the great thing about Malaysia is because you have the different nationalities, a lot of people there, well, I mean, they all speak English and um, English is the national language. It's when they're out doing business, that's what they're speaking. So, yeah. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Uh, Ging is doing laundry by hand right now. <laughs> so, yeah, Malaysia is pretty well balanced economically and, and socially for sure. Yeah. Hey, Dale. Good morning. It's getting hard to maintain a positive attitude. I'm turning into a cranky old man. Uh, you and me both, Dale. Like I said, uh, yesterday I was on the way to the grocery store with my girlfriend, and we've been there hundreds and hundreds of times going by the checkpoint. And yesterday they pulled me and my girlfriend over along with every other person or not every other, but every person who was on a motorbike with more than one passenger, they were pulling over and saying, today is the last day tomorrow, no more back riders. And uh, even at the grocery store, it was, it was a bit stricter than normal getting in. So I'm worried that on June 15th, we might go backwards here. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, dating. Chinese women are open to dating. India, very conservative. Muslim depends. That's perfectly said, Daniel. Yeah. So that's why I say if you want to date in Malaysia, your best bet, China, uh, Chinese, the Chinese Malay are probably the best option for you. Or dating uh, overseas foreign workers. And there's not just Filipinas that are there. There's also Vietnamese that are there. There's Thai girls, Indonesian. Um, so all of them are available for you to date. Um, India, very conservative. Probably You're probably not going to date an Indian girl. Not likely. Uh, Muslim, perhaps. Hey, Brent. No, never late. Uh, no problem. Uh, do you know if the Muslim Malay women move in with their boyfriends before marriage? Um, I, I would say no, is my guess. But. Uh, 
Thirty percent capacity in the restaurant. Hell, service will be quick. Well, it's the Philippines, so it probably still won't be. <laughs> but maybe. Uh, is Malaysia predominantly Muslim, like Indonesia, or is it Buddhist, Christian linked? Um, I would. It's, it's predominantly Muslim. I would say about forty percent Muslim, maybe. Um, I don't know. Maybe Daniel can speak on that. I don't know the exact number to be honest, but uh, I felt like it was a good mix. So, Lance, don't believe or Craig, don't believe all the hype. My mayor in San Jose and governor are really screwed things up, and I and I and I guess you saw our riot. Thirty <laughs> percent capacity with five percent stock levels. <laughs> Well, that, that's been a major problem. Uh, everybody's been out of stuff because of deliveries and, and things. So, uh, Brent, how, how is the police presence and protection there in Malaysia? Is crime really low, as many people say? Yeah, it's, it's really low. I felt like I could walk anywhere at any time, at any time of the day. You know, um, I, was, I felt very, very safe. I, I felt much, much safer than I did and uh, the Philippines walking around, to be honest. Um, and the Philippines, I feel generally safe too, but there are some areas that I don't want to walk around at night, and I don't want to walk into a neighborhood at nighttime. But uh, there, I had no problem. Yeah, predominantly Muslim, but very friendly to other re religions, yep. Uh, Fernando, are vitamins and health supplements easy to find in the local pharmacies in the Philippines? Just basic stuff. You know, you can find the vitamin D and vitamin E and vitamin C and things like that. But other than that, um, you're not going to find a whole lot. You'll have to go into a, a health food store or something like that to find all of that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Daniel. It's relatively safe, but uh, in Johor, only pickpocketing is still prevalent. Yeah, that's right. Um, in the crowded night markets, perhaps, you know, you got to be careful of somebody pickpocketing you. But other than that, uh, their police don't play around. And it's also a very, very clean city. It's like Singapore. So don't dare uh, spit your gum out on the ground or something like that. You want to, <laughs> well, of course, there's a, trash cans everywhere. Okay, Muslims in Malaysia, very diverse and open. Some Malaysian women don't wear hijabs. Joe ha, 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 have had me studying for the past few months on Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, there's a lot of Muslim women that you wouldn't even know they're Muslim. They just walk around like normal. Um, that's why I... I think a lot of Muslim women are actually open to dating, dating Western guys. And I've known some guys here in the chat room that have told me they've dated Muslim girls. So, yeah. Borkai will open to tourism to locals in Western Besides next month. Yeah, hopefully good things coming in July, I'm hoping. Well, Malaysian Muslim women date non-Muslims. Yeah, I, I think we just answered that. Uh, the majority of them have no problem with that. So let's see here. Maybe actually it's at 112,000 deaths in the USA. Prediction is to be at 200,000 mark by end of September. Yeah, definitely not uh, 20 million or whatever number <laughs> she said. <laughs> Uh, I meant to say some Malaysian Muslim women don't wear the, uh, how do you say that, that word wrong? Hajibs. Which natural disasters are known to occur in Malaysia? You know, as far as I know, there's not really a whole lot. Um, they do tend to rain more than the Philippines or tend to get more rain than the Philippines. So. TJ, you'll have to buy or rent another motorbike so you guys can go together. I know. Um, yeah, I just bought, if anybody doesn't know, I, I just bought a motorbike 
and I, I just bought a cheap one. It was it's but it's brand new and it's got a full warranty and it's uh, it's a Chinese bike. It's called a Rusi Passion, and uh, it was selling for forty six thousand pesos. I offered forty and they accepted it. I should have offered less because they accepted it just like that, like without any negotiation. And so I'm sure that I probably could have said 36,000 and they probably would have negotiated and I probably could have got it for maybe 37, 38. So I kicked myself. Uh, I've got a friend of mine coming over today at one o'clock to check it out because he might, he's locked down and he's stuck here. And so he wants to check it out and perhaps buy one because I was paying 5,000 a month uh, to rent and God, I've been renting like six months now. So that's 30,000 pesos I've spent and I just bought a new one for 40. So it doesn't take a mathematician to figure out. It doesn't take long to get your money back on it really. And if I'm stuck here for three, four months, then what I would do is not really give it to my girlfriend's family, but I would keep it there and they could use it while we're gone. And if we, and when, and if we come back to visit her family, then our bike is there and I can use it and I don't have to worry about renting or anything. So yeah. So God willing, I'll find myself in Southeast Asia before the year is out. Your insights have been a great source for knowledge for me. I have the funds. It's just time and location to pin down. Yeah, well, I'm glad I could help. And, uh, you know, if if you come here pack, packing light, you know, like a minimalist, you know, why not uh, explore a little bit before you even settle down? You know, I that's kind of what I kick myself when I look back. I kick myself for not doing that, maybe exploring a little bit before I just settled into one spot. So, yeah. Uh, recent news, Cebu City Mayor talked and talks of possibly reverting its status to modified enhanced community quarantine due to cases spiking, but we'll wait for IATF recommendation on June 15th. Um, Daniel, I think that's, I feel like that's going to happen here in Negros Oriental too. Um, I really do. Okay. Oh, Pandang is Buddhist Chinese. Okay. That might not be a good, that might be a good spot. Hey, Anthony, how you doing? Uh, from Baiwan. Very wet drive to Duma yesterday to pick up my passport from BI. I'm dreading my return to the U.S. Would stay here if I could. Can't wait to get back even before I leave. Are you uh, are you taking a sweeper flight, Anthony? Sweeper flight over to Manila and Manila back home? No, uh, there really isn't because... Um, they know they can't get any other foreigner in there right now. So they're just waiting. As soon as things open up, they'll, I'll be going there. So I, I would imagine it's probably going to be about two to three months before I'm over there. So I have a question. If you can't have two people on a bike, then how do they regulate people riding in all the jeepneys? Um, well, now they only allow one person in a tricycle, only one person. I don't know how these tricycle drivers can, uh, make a living now off of one person in a tricycle, the gas alone, it wouldn't be worth it. Um, they're going to have to charge double, triple the price. And then who wants to pay that? So I don't know. They're, they're, they're screwing themselves up. And the jeepney, I'm not sure, but um, they're not going to pack them in anymore. I know that. Uh, Zane, I made it in. I didn't miss the live stream this time, Gio. Good evening from Oregon. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? Or good evening there. I uh, encourage you not to book Philippines Airlines to return to the U.S. due to last-minute cancellations and leaving people stranded. Try Korean Air, Singapore, Cathay, Cathay Pacific starting next month. Uh, that's good advice. Yeah, the no riders and scooters really bites. Do you think that'll be temporary or long-term? <clears throat> I think it's probably going to be temporary, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. It's... I don't, I don't think it's realistic. I mean, people have families. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. You're, you're married or living with your girlfriend. You guys are doing whatever, you know, together and you can't have her on the back of your bike. It just makes no sense. Um, what if your, uh, what if your wife is working 
and and she needs a ride into town to go to her job. I mean, it just it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, is dating and the women in Malaysia different than the Philippines? Yeah, it's a lot different, for sure. Is it just me, or is the video black now? Um, I think that might just be you. Uh, Anthony Keller, also be prepared that only two kilogram carry-ons, one item only is allowed for cabin. Yeah. Um, I recommend that you acclimate the culture first before getting to know women. Yeah. For sure. I wouldn't even worry about the women. The women are always going to be there. And there's going to be plenty of Filipinas working there, Chinese, Malay. Um, you know. So that's a good point, Daniel. Uh, could you compare the cost of living in Malaysia with, say, Cebu or Duma? That's really a uh, video that I plan on doing once I get there. But um, I would say with Cebu, if we're talking about condo living, Malaysia is cheaper. Um, Duma, you know, like in living in the apartment that I'm living, then Duma Getty is a bit cheaper as far as rent goes. Um, but things like electric and internet are more expensive here. Um, food I find to be more expensive here. So I would say overall, personally, Malaysia is a little bit more expensive, but your quality of life, you know, here's the Philippines and here's Malaysia, your quality of life in Malaysia is up here and the Philippines is here. So you might pay a little bit more in Malaysia, but your quality of life is just so much better, better food, uh, no air and noise pollution and just, you know, a bunch of different things. Yeah. He jobs, he jobs. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, they, exactly what Daniel just said. So, yep. <laughs> Bill, just put a trailer. That's a good, I could uh, put a trailer on the back of my motorbike. Perfect. Penang is cheaper, yeah. Postal service is probably, they, they have street numbers and it's, it's much, it's night and day difference, Michael. Night and day difference. Uh, the German airline fund uh, plans to cut 22,000 jobs. She's... 46,000 Filipino pesos is 912 U.S. dollars. Let's see here. Ooh, that, um, that's a very detailed question, Griffin. Um, Philippines is 30 days upon arrival, and then you can extend... Um, Vietnam is also 30 days, uh, but you need a e-visa. And Malaysia, you get 90 days. Um, I'm going to be doing a video on the visa situation in Malaysia. But um, as of right now, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit lengthy to go into a lot of detail into every country's visa. That, that would be kind of time consuming. So I do have a visa... Uh, video on the Philippines, and I will do one on Malaysia within the next few days. Uh, I've changed my ticket from September to December today, Gio. I'm not feeling good about September. I think that's probably uh, much safer, for sure. What city in Thailand do you suggest to live? I'll be honest, I'm not real familiar on Thailand. I've only been there one time, and I was in Bangkok for the whole month. I, I did go out and visit. Um, um, I did a couple of small trips to uh, uh, ancient city right on the, on the outskirts, and then I did do a flight to Krab Krabi, um, and I was there for about three days. But um, I know that places like Chiang Mai and um, other places are, are real nice. But honestly, I, I don't know for sure. 
I, I don't have enough experience in Thailand yet. Yet. Anthony Keller, I have a flight to Ichan on Asiana from Mactan in August and then Delta to Detroit for the rest of the way home. Oh, okay. Yep. There you go, Daniel. That's perfect. Um, so, again, I, I'll be doing a uh, visa um, video on Malaysia soon. So. What ways is different in, in Malaysia than the Philippines? Well, um, the women are more conservative, for one. Um, probably not the large age gap thing as well. It's probably not as common. Um, again, you, could date, you can date a Filipina there. So, you know, if you, if, if you want a younger girl or you want uh, a girl who's not so conservative, then maybe target uh, dating a Filipina while you're there. But it's going to be just more conservative and things are going to move a little bit more slow. And she's going to be a lot more probably uh, work oriented too. I looked, do me yesterday. All the trikes and motorcycles had more than one person. Trikes were packed, so were jeepneys. Yeah, but apparently to, uh, yesterday was the last day for all of that. That's what they, that's what they stated. We'll see what happens. Gio, you're right about Filipinas. One kept trying to Facebook call me, even though we had very limited contact. This from single friends of Rike. Yeah, that would always that always drove me nuts when they try to call you, video call you without even asking. You know, you could be, you know, at work. You could be in bed sleeping. You could be uh, um, in the uh, bathroom, and they're just calling you without even asking or saying anything. So, yeah, right. You really, your main thing really should learn about the culture a little bit, kind of know your surroundings, uh, kind of see how things work and then, and then go for the dating. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I heard that geo uh, pollution, not bad in Malaysia. No, it's not bad at all. Um, it's really good. I, it was nice to walk around Kuala Lumpur and, and have fresh air. So, yeah. Hey, Scott, how are you doing? Uh, and Scott, thanks for being a YouTube member, by the way. <laughs> Johnny Carson back on the Tonight Show. I think I'm caught up on your videos in Gings. How deep was that water you guys jumped on Gings video? I would say it was about eight feet deep. Yeah, about eight feet. Yeah, um, will I sell my bike there and buy one in Kuala Lumpur? Um, no, I uh, will not sell my bike. I will let my, let my girlfriend's family use it while I'm gone, and then when we come back and visit, I'll, it'll be there for me to use. Yeah, um, Cam, I, I will be doing a video on my new scooter. I don't know how popular that'll be, but uh, I think I probably will do that. Yeah. Yep, uh, Roger, uh, not a big drinker, but alcohol is a lot more expensive in Malaysia. Yeah, for sure. Um, again, that, that for me, it's not a factor either. I, I'm not really a drinker. A glass of wine on a special occasion or with, with a nice Italian meal, but other than that, I'm not really a drinker. So, Yeah, if, if you're getting a condo for 11500 in Davao, that's fantastic. Most were about 25000 or more. Yeah, I've got some friends in Cebu who are also getting some good deals as well. And me, I'm, I get, I'm paying for this nice apartment here for 16000 And I got uh, cable TV, uh, fiber internet, and water all included in that. So I've got a great deal too. So it's going to be a little bit more expensive for me in Malaysia, but um, I feel like the quality of life is going to be much better too. So still hoping for January to visit the Philippines. Awesome. How does Malaysia feel about Western American men? Are we as welcome as we are in the Philippines? Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Um, 
Ernest, how are the electronics in Malaysia? Are they expensive? I know in the Philippines, they're very expensive. In Malaysia, they're a bit cheaper. Yeah, I would say they're cheaper. Hey, Michael, how are you doing? Let's see here. Uh, Daniel, what kind of lifestyle are you into? If you're if city life, then Bangkok. If province life, then Chiang Mai. Um, yeah, those are good options too. Daniel, Gio, your new scooter was 600. No, actually it was 800. It was 40,000 pesos. You said it would pay for itself by January. You're paying 100 per month per lease. Yep, I was paying 100 per month. Um, when I say pay for itself, I don't necessarily be 100% paid for, but at least it's something I own. I no longer have to pay that monthly payment. And I am not selling it. I'm simply going to let her family use it. So it will pay for itself. Um, and then when we come back to visit, then we will just, uh, we have a motorbike here. So that's what I mean. I, I don't necessarily mean um, it'll be totally paid for. I mean, I paid for it in cash, but yeah, I actually spent 800, but I think I could have got it for less. Yeah, it's welcoming, but I recommend that you explore and get to know the locals first before deciding whether you feel welcomed. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit different. If you're used to the Philippines, you're going to feel um, like, they're, at first, you might feel like they're a little bit cold, but they're really not. You just have to talk to them. Um, they don't have that uh, those big smiles and you know and things like they do in the Philippines. So just get to know them. Hey, Steve, uh, did you already secure housing in Malaysia, or do you have a good idea? I have a, a pretty good idea of where I want to be, which is near my school. Um, so, yeah, I, I kind of have a, a good idea. I've kind of researched, but nothing, nothing, you know, nothing concrete yet. Not until I'm actually there and, and I can actually look at the condo units. But the condo that I, I really like has an infinity pool. And even on the top floor, it's got uh, gardens up there that you can walk around. And, uh, and then it's got a huge gym on the, on the ground level. When you move into this condo, it includes breakfast buffet. Can you believe that? A breakfast buffet for all its tenants is included. <laughs> a gym and infinity pool walking area. And there's a park outside. Um, it's just, it's amazing. And it's like uh, $465 a month. Yeah. Uh, Michael, friends, friends that I know, Females in the Philippines, they ask me why I don't call. And I just say, you know, I'm in my apartment all day. What am I going to talk to you about? That's kind of aggravating. <laughs> yeah, that happens. Give me an idea about the cost of laptops here in the Philippines. If you can get a laptop for 450 in the U.S., what would it be there? Add about 30% onto that. That's my experience, about 30% more. Uh, if you're only going to any of Southeast Asia just for dating, then you're falling yourself short. My two cents for you guys is out there is, again, learn the culture first. I totally agree with Daniel. Um, if, if the only purpose is to come out here for dating, you're going to be disappointed in a lot of different areas. Um, you got to want to be interested in the culture a little bit. Uh, maybe nature, like you, you know, you're big into scuba diving, so living on the beach area is going to be fantastic. Or if you're really into nature and hiking and waterfalls, you know, you're going to love it. But if you're coming strictly for dating, you know, dating's fantastic, but you'll be disappointed in a lot of different areas. So, Spaghetti is gone, man. Spaghetti is gone. Yeah, Dean, I'm big into scuba diving and snorkeling. I've been... I got certified for scuba diving. I took it as an elective in college in Florida, in Orlando, in 1998, got uh, certified. And then I went on to get my advanced open water and, and a few specialty courses, nitrox and things like that. 
So being a minimalist, do you rent your snorkeling and diving gear or do you have your own snorkeling gear and regular setup that you take with you? Um, I only have my own mask and uh, snorkel. I don't like putting my face or my, my mouth on uh, rented gear. And I like to know I got a nice good seal. So that I um, have my own, but as far as the rest of it, I, I rent. Yeah. Um, if I settled into a place where I said, you know what, I really, really like this place. I'm going to be here for a while. I would think about buying my own regulator and fins and things like that. In my own BCU. Uh, rates for renting a scooter are going to depend where you're renting the scooter. And when I say where, I mean what city. Because if you're in Cebu City, it's more expensive to rent a scooter than here in Dumaguete or Siki or one of these small little islands. Um, if you're talking about like Dumaguete, plan on about uh, 6,000 pesos, 120 US for a whole month. So, Gio, with the fiber internet you currently have, has it ever gone down? Um, two times. Uh, one time it was it was uh, down for 12 hours. Another time it was down for half the day. But I've been here for a while, so I guess that's not so bad. Uh, why did you buy a new scooter if you move into Malaysia? You said you will ride it when you get back. Are you going to keep it in storage? Uh, I'm keeping it with my girlfriend's family. And so they will use it. Yeah. And the truth is, Tom, I don't know how long I'm stuck here. Um, who know? I don't know the exact date Malaysia will open up its uh, borders for me to get into. So I, I'm just tired of paying 5,000 pesos a month. So I'd rather own it. And even worst case scenario, if I gave it to their family, hey, whatever, you know. Uh, are you talking about the 465 would include uh, cable TV, uh, water, internet, electric, um, I would pay, but the electric is pretty uh, inexpensive. It's got the nice split level type energy saving air cons in each room. So I know a lot of Filipinos here in America, Wisconsin, Illinois, some of them I've been friends with for 20 years and the family men and our family men, and they tell me the Filipinos in the States are more wild than there. Really? <laughs> uh, 97% of South Korea's COVID-19 cases now in Seoul. Already sent a warning to our friend and YouTube channel host, The Kingly Way, to avoid going to Seoul for a while. Interesting. Okay. Oh, Gio, I'm certified Patty and Nowy, and where's the best place to dive in the Philippines. Well, I don't know if there's a best place to dive in the Philippines. There's a lot of good places. There's Mole Bowl in Cebu. There's um, uh, Sikior. There's Bohol. There's uh, Palawan. Um, Samal Island by Davao. There's just a lot of great places, really, all over the Philippines. Yeah. Um, funny, I, I got my open water certification as Naui. And then when I got my advanced open water, I did it uh, as Patty. So I'm like you with the split certification. Yeah, uh, you definitely will learn about Tompo soon enough. It's, it can be frustrating um, at times. Um, it's, it's very different than the way we are. Some wild ones, yeah. <laughs> yep. Oslo, Cebu, Mindoro Island, yeah. Uh, Jomtien. Jomtien is the best, yeah. That's a nice area. Recent news. Jamaica has announced it will reopen its borders for international travelers on June 15th. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't want to go to Jamaica. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I have tickets for 20 to 20, 20 and 21st, but I'm not going there for dating. I might uh, meet a couple of ladies, you know, that I've known for years online, but mostly want to see you guys. Uh, you're like rock stars to me. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, we're definitely more than willing to meet up with uh, anybody at any time. So, yeah, for sure. I actually miss that. I was meeting I was meeting people on a weekly basis here in Dumaguete. And, uh, of course, now that nobody's coming, I haven't met somebody in months. Uh, Dan, ever seen any sea snakes while diving? Are there a problem? I have seen sea snakes several times here. Um, they are never a problem. They, they are more afraid of you. You know, they, they go away. Um, the only time I've ever heard of anybody having a problem with a sea snake is if you like stepped on it or something while you're walking, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a problem. So I've been going about an hour. We'll see. I, I'll go, uh, a, a little bit longer. See if we have any last questions here. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I plan on doing, uh, a visa, um, let me see couple new videos this week. I'll do one on visas for Malaysia. I will do one on uh, my motorbike that I just bought. So other than that, uh, I'm always open for suggestions. If somebody says, hey, uh, you ever thought about doing a video on this? Then, you know, I'll take it into consideration for sure. So, uh, Uzel Finch, thank you for the um, super chat. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Is the scooter is going to be a gift? And if and if they decide to regift, you're going to have to suck it up. Girlfriend's parents. I don't think they would ever do that. I, they're not going to regift it. Um, I trust them. They're they're really good people. Um, they're not going to regift it. So let's see here. Seems like there are a lot of Indians in Malaysia, and are they easy to get along with, like Filipinos? Some Indian girls are really hot. They are easy to get along with, yeah. In fact, uh, some of the, the Indian people were just extremely friendly. Yeah, I have no problems with uh, Indians for the most part, yeah. Hey, how you doing? Live my ass off is here, hope you're great. Aloha from uh, Thailand. My vote would be for Thailand, of course. Because he's over there in Thailand. So, yeah, give us a ride on the new bike. Yeah, I, I'll do a video on the, on the new bike for sure. So, Gio, you suggest go with Airbnb over a hotel for a two-week trip to the Philippines? Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to feel much more like home. I mean, you're going to have a pool and you're going to have a nice place where you can actually cook a meal. If you have a date, you can bring a girl back and you got like a living room with a, a nice couch to watch a movie, you know, versus a hotel where you're just, you know, it's, it's just uh, hotels feel a bit claustrophobic after a while. So for me, yeah, I, I prefer um, hotels. I only do for a few nights. Yeah. So Albert, from my years of experience in Malaysia, living and working there, please, just be aware of the existing culture clashes. It isn't the Philippines by no means. Yeah, for sure. It's not the Philippines. Um, culture clashes, though, they're really more with the Indian, Chinese, and Malay. Us Westerners, we don't really kind of have that culture clash. Um, but, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. Um, you would know more than, than me. I haven't lived there yet, so. Uh, Philippe, hey, Joe, we have a new nation. The name is Chaz. Six blocks inside Seattle City. New nation. Interesting. Uh, into the fire. Can you extend stays with Airbnb like one to three months? Yeah, you get your best deals with Airbnbs doing like one month at a time. Absolutely. So, yep. Let's see here. Let's see if we have any last comments here. Take a drink of my coffee here. One second. Yeah, I bought this bike. Um, I just, um, I actually, I actually had a close call on it the other day, and I was like, 
if I drop this bike, even if I'm not hurt or anything, and I drop the bike and I damage it, well, I'm responsible to pay for it, any damage. So for me, it just made sense just to buy. Then I can I can tear it up. I can if I drop it or if it I can let my girlfriend practice on her motor, you know, on her riding um, or her driving skills, and uh, I don't have to worry about it being damaged or something. Um, it's got a full warranty for 13 months. As long as you follow their maintenance schedule, it, um, it's all covered. So, yeah. Um, so it's just made a lot of sense for me. And, you know, if, uh, if I give it to my girlfriend's family and, uh, I don't, um, I don't ever come back and I don't see it again, it, whatever, you know, it's not the end of the world. So, Uh, no insurance available on scooters there. Um, you can buy insurance. When I bought my motorbike in Cebu, I bought a Honda. It came with one year of insurance. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Western suits. Is there plenty of Western sizes? <sighs> um, you know, it's so warm out here. You usually don't even need a wetsuit. Um. I would probably bring my own, but uh, don't bring anything more than a three mil. Um, even the Lycra is probably fine. Can I have the location of your new condo with breakfast in Kuala Lumpur, please? Uh, Philippe, if you message me privately, I don't want uh, everyone to know exactly where I'll be living. And it's not 100% sure I'll be living there, but pretty sure. Um, I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. So send me an email and I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, Zane, I just want to say thanks to you for all you do. We appreciate all the videos um, and the research and live streams and the question and answer videos. Thanks again. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Zane. Uh, wow. Uh, thank you, Earl, so much. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Daniel, recent news. India to examine resuming international flights as countries ease restrictions. Is, is, does anybody want to go to uh, India? Let's see here. Uh, I stayed in Tagaytai for a month. The owner said she could give me a better deal by cutting out the middleman. Yeah, um, actually, when I was in Davao, same thing happened. I stayed there for one week, and then I messaged the owner and said, hey, can you come by? I wanted to ask you something. They came by, and I said, hey, uh, I'd like to extend for a whole month. What kind of a deal can you give me? And, of course, it's cheaper. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, probably like UGO turns and back. Of course, Brian and Marcel and Anthony. Look. Okay. I'm, I didn't quite get that. Okay. I uh, guess I better go, bro. But, hey, I have. I do have something important to let you and Paul, old dog Enrique about Paul is connected to my Facebook page. So I'll let him know. Um, I'm, uh, I'm on Facebook. You can, uh, you can add me on Facebook too. So I'm on Facebook as well. Tom, do you think you have yellow fever and not the Corona kind, the attractive to Asians kind? I, I'll be the first one to admit. Yes, I do. Um, but, Actually, I had more of a Latin fever for a while. I actually like Latin women is what I originally really was attracted to. And then it kind of turned into liking the Asian women. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, no, no problem, Philippe. Um, I mean, it's 465 bucks, infinity pool, um, a huge gym. And it's got gardens. On, on one level, it's got a gardens. Um, where you can, it's like, they call it the sky deck with gardens and you can, it's got sidewalks. You can walk all over. Um, bottom floor is a restaurant with a coffee shop and breakfast buffet is included. I mean, 465 bucks in breakfast is included. And, um, also there's a park right outside as well and shops. I mean, it's just phenomenal. So yeah, I'm quite excited. Hey, uh, Philippe, thanks so much. No problem. <laughs> I am, I'm kind of an early, early bird, to be honest. So thanks for the super chat. 
Let's see. I just want to catch up on all the last uh, comments here. Yeah, even here in the in America, the Indians are are you know kind, always smiling. Some date a white guy, but others are very clannish. Yeah, they might be a bit more uh, open minded in Malaysia, possibly. Approximately, how much would a 250 cc motorcycle cost? Can you ride a dirt bike on the street? You can ride a dirt bike on the street. You can ride anything on the street here. Um, I don't know. I, I'd have to research that. They speak English in India. Um, they do speak some English, quite a bit of English in India. But I, I have no desire to go to India. I've eaten too many of their relatives. The karma might be too much. <laughs> hey, King Li Wei, good morning. Uh, I've renewed my visa for Korea, and I'm good for the next three years. I still have an Asian home base just in case we have another pandemic issue. You're probably in the right spot. Yeah. Asian women are amazing. Never go back to Western women ever again. Yeah, you and me both. I would never. First time trip, Makati or Cebu? I'm going to say Cebu. Cebu, for sure. Brent, I'm sure a girl like Ging would turn you off of Latin women. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the cool thing about Filipino women is they got that Latin Asian mix. So it's like you're getting the Asian Latin mix. So Philippines, Filipina women are quite interesting. What kind of investments do you have outside of the money uh, when you get from working? Well, when I worked at the Progressive Insurance for 12 years, I had a 401k with this. They had a 6% match. So, and that was through Fidelity. So I, I maintained that. Um, and then I do uh, systematic investing with Acorns Investing. And I do that as well. I, I'm, I'm, right now I'm kind of like not, not low risk, but moderate investing. You know, I mean, uh, or not, I mean, middle of the road uh, as far as risk goes. Actually, there's a link down in my description for Acorns, but that's what I use now. You know what they say, when, when you budget, you should always pay yourself first. So that's what I do. I pay myself as far as investing. So I remember when I was 17, I went by the Navy recruiter's office. The guy started pulling out Polaroid pictures from the desk of his Filipino girlfriends. I was like, where do I sign up? <laughs> Yeah. What do you like about Latina women? Was there a lot of Latinas in your American hometown? Um, what I I went to high school in Kissimmee and grew up in Orlando. You know, I worked in Orlando and lived there. And so in Florida, there was a lot of Latin women. Um, I just like the skin color, the dark hair, the dark eyes. Um, just. Uh, you know, they're kind of uh, sassy and spicy. And <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I was just initially I was attracted to Latin women. Like I've said before, I was initially I was going to go to Colombia. So, hey, thank you, Stephen. I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I, I was just telling people, Stephen, that actually I, no longer am I going to really do the uh, if I do a video like this where it's just um a talking head type video. Um, I'm probably going to put video in the background so people don't have to just stare at me. They, I'm sure they'd rather see what I'm talking about than just like stare at me directly. So, yeah. So, uh, Gary, greetings from San Fran. Enjoyed your Malaysia video. My wife is Malaysian. We live in the U.S., but hope to retire in Malaysia in the future. The country is multicultural, Chinese, Indian, Malay. Um, so, Gary... Is your wife, is she Chinese, Malay, Indian, or is she Malaysian, like Muslim? Just, uh, I'm just curious. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. I appreciate that, Steve. <laughs> do you have E-Trade there? Um, I think they have it here, but I, I, don't, I don't do any day trading or E-Trade, but I, th I think they have it, yeah. Where are you? I'm in the Philippines, Dumaguete. 
Uh, I've been to over 30 countries in India by far is the most fascinating. I wouldn't want to live there, but it's great to travel to. I've heard that from people too. So yeah, perhaps that's a place in the future that I might visit. So President Duterte to announce the country's quarantine statuses varied by regions on June 15th. Nothing, nothing like waiting to the last moment. Oh, yeah. In India, yeah, I heard they have a lot of uh, great nature and stuff there, too. Yeah, Latinas are feisty for sure. <laughs> so lots to see in India, fascinating place, but not for the first time, Western tourists. Philippines will be enough of a shock for you. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine so. Um, Philippines, you can kind of ease into because the, you know, you're able to speak English and there's a lot of Western amenities and things like that. So, yeah. All right, guys, um, unless there's any last questions, I'm going to go ahead and call it uh, a day. Um, any last questions that come in, I will uh, answer. Oh, thank you, Gary, for answering that. So wife is Chinese Malay speaks Cantonese, Mandarin, Malay, and English. Most Malaysians are at least bilingual. Um, thank you, Gary. That was actually what I was talking about previously. It, most people that I know in Malaysia um, date Chinese Malay because they are the most open to uh, dating Western guys. Um, Gary, do you guys have an age difference at all between you and your wife, or are you guys close together in age? I'll wait for you to answer that here. Uh, Thomas, so who are the three diaper loads that gave you a thumbs down? <laughs> um, probably trolls. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right. Take care, Brent. Take care, Ken. And uh, David, take care. I'll wait for Gary to answer because I'm kind of interested if he has a, an age gap with his wife uh, being Chinese Malay. But it goes back to what I was saying, um, that uh, most guys who live in Malaysia will end up, if, if they're going to date local girls, they end up dating Chinese Malay. So, hey, uh, good morning, uh, Venice. I was actually, we're just actually wrapping things up here. <laughs> All right, Anthony, glad, uh, glad to help you with your start of the day. So take care there. I Thanks for watching. Just gonna wait a second, see if Gary's gonna answer on uh, on that there, on that question. But uh, we'll give him a minute or so. One year apart. Okay. Cool. Okay. Very cool. Okay, Carl. Take care. And uh, Cadiz, how you doing? I just tuned in. Yeah, I'm just uh, on the way out here. And uh, Rose, how you doing? Okay, guys, again, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time. Take care, everyone.